I'm going to teach you the best possible start for Starfield. Here's what we're going to cover in the video. We're going to cover how to min-max your credits, that's money in this game, your earnings, how to get a super weapon early on, and standard weapons so that you can easily destroy the entire game from the very start, how to get the best in slot legendary armor for farming, a free ship that lets you do smuggling, have lots of storage, and is just better than your starter ship, how to be overleveled before starting the main quest line, and all of this is done in under one hour. Let's go. When you reach this part of the tutorial where you are asked to walk across a bridge here and go towards the quest marker, instead jump off the right side and hug the left part of the wall. You're going to see some brown little crystal things here. Just harvest one of these. This helps level up a skill later. Neodymium added. There we are. And uh, all of these are also neodymium. You don't have to grab these. You only You only really need one. Just, just grab at least one. You can grab two if you want. It's not super important if you skip this part. It just makes it easier later on. When you reach this room here, don't go to the quest marker just yet. Make sure that you get at least one of these on the sides. And they do take a little bit sometimes to mine. There we go. Kalium added. Now, it's an okay for starter money, but we're going to make money much faster later. Just clear off, uh, you know, the quest objective here, and uh, I will see you at the character creator screen. For your starting background, it doesn't really matter what you pick. Because we're going to be so geared so early, none of the combat skills matter at the start. But also, if you want a money advantage, you want to pick something with commerce. And so, let's go over the good ones. Cyber Runner's nice. Secure Leveling security just means you will earn more money later. This is basically lock picking. So you want to max out security as early as you can, and it is a pain in the butt to level. Also, another one is Diplomat because of Commerce, which is really nice. It also shares the same tree with Persuasion, so you get at least... If you have two skills learned in a tree, it's easier to go to the next tier earlier on. But other than that, Homesteader is okay. Professor is really nice because all three of these are in the same tech tree. And it, when you level that one up later, the tier 3 or tier 4 skills, are, it's just so much faster to the get there. But the whole reason to level that tech tree is to craft really high endgame gear. But we're going to have that anyway. But you can also use it for your AFK farming on outposts. But you, again, you can choose whatever you want. For this playthrough, I am going to choose the Cyber Runner. Just because I like having the stealth icon on my screen in this game. You don't, whenever you crouch down, you'll enter stealth, and in most Bethesda games, you'll see a stealth icon indicator. You don't get that until you have one level in stealth. I like having the level in security, but uh, again, I would highly recommend Diplomat just because you start with Commerce, so it saves you a level. I'll start with Diplomat. I'll just go ahead and do that, since that's why I'm recommending to you. As for trait choices, let me go over the best ones. You can pick whatever you want, but I'm just going to explain. Alien DNA is more health and more stamina, which this game calls oxygen. And as far as healing and food items not being as effective, food items heal you for almost nothing. The healing kits heal you for a percent over X amount of seconds, and this almost, it's unnoticeable. You're, you're, you're mostly going to be healing from beds in this game anyway, so the healing items are so easy to get in this game, you're never going to be short on them. So this is just a straight buff to your character with really no downsides. The next one is Taskmaster, which means that your crew will repair your ship automatically, which is super useful during a firefight, and just handy in general for saving you repair costs. And the downside is that crews cost twice as much to hire, but we are going to be loaded and rich, and so money is no issue. If one guy costs 8,000 to hire and then city costs 16,000 to hire, we just loot a few extra guns and it pays for it. It's not a big deal. The final one is really ultimately your choice. I'm going to explain the two best ones. Dream Home sounds terrible. It sounds like you're in debt forever. That's a huge amount of money. It's not a huge amount of money. The way Dream Home works is every week you have to pay 500 credits to use your house. If you don't, you just can't enter the house. And it's also pretty cheap compared to other housing in this game. This is the ultimate cheap housing. It's one of the best houses in the game. It, they just give you one of the best houses. The only thing that the house really does, it's used for storage, decoration. You can put a bunch of crafting benches in it if you want to do crafting. But those things are scattered all over the game and in your ships. 
So there's no shortage of any of this. It's just a, an extra fun place to go to. You can't get this home normally in the game. The only way to access this house is through this trait. It is the only way. Also, the next one is Wanted. Now, this sounds bad. It sounds really bad to have random encounters where people try to kill you. But what this is, is free loot. These guys are, they don't bug you during main story missions, so you won't, like, get ganked while you're trying to, you know, do a dialogue option or anything. But, essentially, extra enemies means more loot means more money. So it's up to you what you want to do. Uh... I don't really care for storage of the dream home thing, but you can't get there otherwise unless you pick this. Uh, everything else is pretty terrible and doesn't really give you much of anything. So I'm going with Wanted because that makes the game more fun and you get more money. I want to note in the game that the robot characters will read your name through text-to-speech. So if you want to put your name as something funny and stupid and then when the robot says your name you can laugh about it, that's how it is. Just know that your name is pretty much permanent. As soon as your character is created, what you want to do now is pick everything up that is not bolted down. Now, this is a starting zone. No people will attack you. You won't get crime stat. You won't be charged, you know, a bounty. No one's going to aggro and try to fight you. Everything here is fully up for grabs. When you highlight an item, normally in the game, there will be a red icon indicating that you're stealing it. But in this case, we can just take it. And what I want you to do is take every single thing that you possibly can, even completely useless junk that has no value, because this is how we're going to level up our commerce skill in just a little bit. So it's very important to nab everything, including this. This character will get mad that I stole this oh, from them. Sure. Just take my stuff. All yours. It's fine. That character's not important. You'll never see her again. And um, again, just grab every single thing that you can. Don't worry. You can carry a lot of weight, and most of this stuff is pretty worthless. So just sit here and just mash, 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 mash. And there you go. And <laughs> grab everything you can in every single room. Just hug a wall a and just mouse around every single thing and just spam the grab key. And yoink it all up. It's very important to do this. Now, when I say pick up everything, I mean every single little thing. Here, like th this foam cup. These uh, napkins, if they let you loot them, this person's sandwich and plates, every little tiny thing that you can possibly do. And don't worry, they'll get mad, but uh, they won't do anything. A lot of them, uh, anyway, especially the playing cards, that's huge, that's a real, real big one. Now some of this stuff can be a little heavy, and I didn't mean to sit down, so be careful when doing that, because that will eat up some of your time. But uh, the heavy stuff, we can get rid of pretty early on. It's not a big deal. We're about to gain a whole lot of storage in just a little bit. So make sure that you fully clean out every room. You don't have to pick up another cutter because um, that's your standard like default item. And uh, if you happen to drop your all your cutters later on, the game will just spawn one for you because uh, it's a vital game mechanic to have one at all times. Just be careful not to spam your use button and sit in the chairs. But you do want to just grab every single possible thing here. There we go. And uh, right now, I've cleaned out... Oh, we got a couple supply shelves. And again, every single thing has to go. Also, you can you can drag. Some items you can, you can pick up and drag them out. And uh, check behind them. And there might be stuff. So always be looking out for that. Make sure you crouch down. Grab every single one of these books and folders. It's coming with us. And it's going to, again, level our commerce incredibly fast. Also the darts, dart, there's some darts there, some on the floor. Just be very proactive and look at everything. After looting all of the rooms, my weight currently is at 83 mass out of 135. That's plenty. We're going to loot some more stuff here in a bit. If we go overweight, we can still move at a normal speed. It'll be fine. We can store it in just a bit. Once you're outside, continue to loot things. There's really not a whole lot to pick up, but the most important things are at the main runway here. You do have a pistol and some ammo, so make sure to grab those and then run around and just loot to your heart's content. Check up with the quest givers every once in a while. There's, again, not a lot out here, but uh, be prepared because uh, you're going to be attacked around this red line on this side of the map. But for now, we're going to go back over here and continue the story. So when the mining colony gets attacked, 
there's a few things that you can do to get a little bit of extra loot. Uh, also, they land right over here, so you can grab some of these explosion barrels if you want and kind of have a trap ready for them. I've got a toxic barrel here I'm going to throw at them, but uh, last time I tried this in practice I missed, so we'll try it again. Uh, sometimes it'll disappear from your hands, but uh, <laughs> here we go. That door swings open, I'm going to see if I can gas some of them. Let's see. Now, you want to jump on this ship as soon as possible because otherwise it'll take off, and there is a med kit in there. There we go. We got some gas. It looks like it knocked a few down, but uh, an explosion barrel would have done way more. But real quick, just run on the ship because otherwise it'll take off immediately. Grab this med kit. Um, that's the only thing that you can miss here. And before you kill the enemy pirates, I mean, go ahead and kill some of them. Why not? It's whatever. Make sure you loot all of their stuff. You might get over encumbered at some point. But you want to run kind of to the back line here and start killing non-important teammates. So let's see, that's Barrett. He's like he's a main character. This is Let's see. If you shoot them and nothing happens, they're a main character. Also, you can't kill this robot, but uh there we go. So that is a teammate, which I just killed, and now the pirate will come for me with their hatchet. It's not a big deal. Just fully loot them. Fully loot your teammates. That's why we're killing them for their loot. Here we go. Here's another one. Just take them down. You can also just melee them if you want. It's not a big deal. And, uh, yeah, we're just playing this sloppily. Again, these guys are so weak, it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and <laughs> bash them with our gun. You could also just punch them out. It's whatever. Oh, boy, we exploded. Don't worry about losing health. If you lose enough health, the game is going to tell you that you need to use a med kit. Don't do it. Don't use any med kits here. We're about to be able to sleep in a bed and be fully healed. It's not a big deal. Just, ki again, kill, kill all your teammates that you can. And then you'll see the little indicators here to kill the remaining pirates. So, there we go, take them out. And, uh, yeah, they don't like to stand near explosive uh, barrels sometimes. But, again, it's it's fine as long as you don't die. And if you die, you just restart. It's not a big deal. There we go. We killed all the pirates. And hopefully we killed all of our allies, too. You could grab the cutter. I don't need it. Those things weigh quite a lot, and they don't sell for anything. Check every dead body. And that is... A regular character, so we can take them out. Except, no, the fight ended, so we can't loot them. So we, we missed some loot there. It's okay. You don't have to loot them all, but uh, looks like everything's clean. So it's time to go. We're going to talk to Barrett, and we're going to roll out. By the way, once you're in the ship, you can find a bed here. And I'm sorry, my menu opens every time I alt-tab. You open the bed, you sleep for one hour, that's going to fully heal you. So don't use those med kits. Also, it goes towards your wellness perk. Uh, so, yes, I've learned about skill points. So, your wellness. All you have to do is get hurt a bunch, and then sleep it off. And let me show you a fun trick before you leave the first area. There is a, uh, there's a very easy way to, to power level this up. We're going to go back to the outpost from the ship. And, uh, <laughs> this is, this is super easy to level up your HP early on. So, over here, there's a door you're not supposed to go in yet, and the game lets you know by hurting you, essentially. So, we go to this little, uh, this little broken switch, and we use, we push use on it, it's gonna give us a shock. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the recording here, because it's kind of loud, but I'm gonna shock myself down to very low HP. And I'll be right back. So, I have tased myself down to a very lethal amount of health, and now when I go to sleep, I'm going to have, uh, all of that restored. And there we go, wellness, heal 200 damage. So, if I want to level wellness to the next rank and get 10% more HP, I totally can, because I've fulfilled it however i don't have any skill points because i haven't leveled up yet and i don't want to level this first we want to level commerce first which you have to buy or sell items to be able to level up and because of that that's why we're collecting all this junk now you'll notice also that in my inventory i am overburdened by about four kilograms don't worry once we uh, fly to the next zone we can easily alleviate that problem once you've landed on Crete, you can open the menu and then go to your ship. And now, technically, the ship is yours. You can go to Cargo Hold, and this will just show some stuff that's in it. You can then go to your inventory, and then we're just going to go to Miscellaneous, and that's where all this junk is that we picked up, like bolt cutters and coffee mugs. These don't do anything, but we don't want to carry them around because they do weigh a lot. So we're going to just hit the store button just rapidly as much as possible. And uh, some, some things you can't store, like this artifact. That's a story item. So, but everything else, just keep hitting that E button, and then watch it get stuffed into your ship's storage. 
And we could sell later from the ship's storage. It's not a big deal. You don't have to pull it back out. There's all the playing cards. And uh, yeah, just store as much as you can. Now you can see here, uh, when I switch to Frontier, you can see it has a storage of 450. So obviously, you know, we're not going to fill it up. Not here, not yet. But um, you don't want to, uh, you want to make sure that you're not storing ammo or anything you're going to use. So I go to miscellaneous and I'm just storing all this, you know, random junk. I'm going to back out, go to resources. I don't need any of this for combat or, you know, whatever. Uh, then I'm going to go to weapons and uh, I have five cutters, it says. Well, uh, I, I'm going to store four of them because you do need one for mining in general. The pistol I'm not really going to use, so I'm going to store it. I'm not going to use this maelstrom. Or any of those maelstroms. I'm going to uh, I'm going to store all but one axe, just my axe and cutter. That's what I'm going to do the next zone with. I'm just going to just straight melee. I'll pick up some guns as I go, so it's not a big deal. Next up is spacesuit. I have the one I have equipped. This is the pirate one. It's not better than what I have, so I'm going to store it. Packs, helmets. Let's store that helmet. That actually might have been better, but it it doesn't matter. We're going to get better equipment very soon anyway. Some of these, none of those are better. So I'm going to store all of them, and then ammo. Uh, you can hold on to ammo because ammo is weightless. You don't have to store it. Uh, as far as aid goes, I'm not. I'm going to store all the food items, but you got to be careful because uh, the med pack, you see this heart? That's what we use to heal. We do want to keep that on our person, but everything else can, can just go ahead and go into storage for now. And uh, let's see what else. Notes. Don't need any notes. Absolutely not. And there we go. Our weight is now down to 28. We can now do more looting. Let's see. Storage in the ship. It's, it's not even close to being fully stored. I do want to check one other thing, though. We're going to go to um, Cargo Hold. And I'm looking for something called Amp. We can get it later, but we do need it later on to skip a puzzle. I, I didn't pick up any Amp. Again, it's randomly generated. There we go. We're all set to go to the planet, and uh, all you have to do is... I'm just going to equip a hatchet. You don't even need a hatchet. You can just punch them out. They're level 2 mobs. It's not a big deal. And we're just going to clear the zone now and pick up everything along the way. By the way, you want to be killing everything you encounter and looting them, because they have their own unique loot, and we need that so that we can get our commerce up. So make sure you kill these critters and loot them. Uh, they will attack or run away. It's not a big deal. We have a bed on our ship to heal, and there's no time limit. So, again, just kill absolutely everything that moves in this zone. And, yeah, you could scan some stuff and, uh, you know, harvest some plants if you want. You can go over here, grab some things. You don't really need to. It's just a big time sink, but you do whatever you want. I want to give you a tip for exploring. If you were to just sprint forward, you'll see that your stamina or your oxygen gauge will run out really quickly. A better thing you can do is sprint and then bunny hop. Just constantly jump, and as you're airborne, your oxygen will replenish, and the cost of jumping is much lower than the cost of taking a few steps. So you should always just be constantly jumping everywhere you go so that you don't tucker your character out. There you go. Also, if you're wondering, this is how the bounty hunting works. Every week, the bounty on your character grows higher and higher, for my character, it's currently 2,000. I don't know what it increases to after that because I only ever sleep one hour at a time, so one week takes a long time to pass. But if you're level 2, the bounty hunters will be level 5, and they only show up if you go off course, which is what I did just now. By the way, you can use the F button to uh, pop out your scanner, and everything that you can possibly loot will be highlighted in blue. This will make it a lot easier to yoink all the things that are just randomly around on the ground pack of smokes, we got an orange in the cooler, and uh, yeah, just uh, continue to run around and loot everything. Now, I haven't went to the main mission area yet, I wanted to just kind of see if the bounty hunters would come, and they did. There's really not much out here to do. These areas do level scale slightly, and this planet has a very low level stuff, so it's not really worth doing the side missions. Not yet, anyway. As you go through the zone and you loot all of the dead bodies and possibly all of the junk on the tables and, and want it as well, make sure that you check your, uh, your mass. Don't become overweight. But when you get close, what you're going to do is open your scanner and then, well, you have to leave the facility first. So go ahead and leave the facility and then you can fast travel back to the ship and store everything that you currently have. If you are overweight, then you can't store it. You'll have 
or I'm sorry, you can't fast travel, you'll have to run there manually. And whenever you run when overweight, it's going to rapidly drain your stamina. So this might take a few trips to uh, to stash stuff, but it's going to really help us later on. Super power level commerce immediately to max level, which is amazing to have at the start of the game. So once you're outside, just select the frontier, which is the ship name, and then push uh, E to fast travel. I don't know what the, the controls are on consoles. But once you fast travel there, just, you know, get out of the cockpit and then open the menu and store everything as you've been doing. Also, you've probably taken some damage from fighting enemy mobs. So just rest in the bed, restore your HP, and continue through what I would like to call the dungeon, but it's more like an outpost. I've made a few trips now. As you can see, my cargo hold is starting to slowly approach maximum weight. That's fine. We have 243 different items here in our cargo hold. That's plenty for level 3 commerce. Also, I just want to remind you that you can fast travel to and from the research lab once you've already been there. Again, saves you a lot of time. I also want to mention that anytime you open a computer screen or like a notebook and you have a bunch of choices, while you as the player may not care about Ashta specimens or Candidate 1, your character might. So all you gotta do is just open and close these and your character will have counted them as being red, which can open up new quests or possibilities for loot or dialogue options. By now you should be level 2 and if you've been following just the left wall, you might come into a room that kind of looks like this. And it has a safe and there is a digi pick next to it. You always want to save your game before opening these in case you use them. We can get more later by abusing shop mechanics, but right now we don't have access to a shop. So we're going to open our menu, and depending on what you chose, if you chose a class that did not start with commerce, then you are to put your first skill point into commerce. If you didn't, if you picked a class that did not start with security, your first point will go into security. So we're going to learn security, there we go. And the reason why we do this before we ever pick a lock is because in order to rank up security from now on, we have to pick locks. So we need to pick five locks successfully. And here we go. We're going to pick this uh, novice level safe. And the way this works is, uh, it was a little confusing at first. I didn't think the game explained it very well, but every single one of these circles has these little slots, right? The only way to delete the circle is to insert these lines into all of the open holes. So there is one, two, three, four, five holes on this first slot. That means I need a three and a two in order to, to beat it. And I can see the next one that needs one, two, three, four, five as well. So we want to use a three and a two and a three and a two. Now you could just guess, but here's the easy way to do it every time so you never waste your picks. What you want to do is you want to line them up. Like, uh, hold on, we're gonna just kind of play around here. So this one doesn't line up at all with the first, but that won't always be the case. So definitely this one will be a choice. Let's see, so that works. Now let's find a number three that works. Let's see. So this one will break those two, and this will break those three, so we can run with that. But what about the next, the next, uh, the next section? Well, let's line those up with the ones. Okay, so that lines up there, and then finally this one is the one that we didn't line up. Hold on, so those will break that, that leaves this one, and that one, but we would just simply swing it like that. There we go, everything is lined up, it's ready to go, so we're going to go ahead and do that one now, and we're going to push E, and then E, and then E, and then E, there you go. So that's how to do it without wasting one, because if you undo it, it breaks your digit pick. So, but again, if you save before doing it and you mess up, you can always load. But later on, once we have access to shops, you can just carry a whole bunch of them and you can mess up all you want. And once you level up enough, the game will just open it automatically for you. So it's not a problem. I want to explain to you how to loot certain items from certain objects. So here we have like a toaster oven and inside there's a cube of food and we can't get to it. There's a, you can't break the object. You can't smash it open. If you hold the E button to lift the door up, it's kind of awkward. Like... I know I have, like, you can try to lift the door up, it's really janky, it doesn't work. So what you do is you pick up the whole thing, preferably from, like, the side, and then, uh, you back up, hold on, we grab it, and, uh, yeah, there you go, we just dump it out on the ground, and then we pick it up. And that's how to loot those objects. Sometimes there's good stuff in them, not at the start of the game.
If you've looted everything properly in the first area, you will have acquired five digipix and unlocked five locks. So as soon as we level up, we can start unlocking expert locks at the very start of the game. As you continue to loot, you might become overburdened and instead of teleporting back to the ship, you can talk, talk to Vasco here and then go to Let's Trade Gear. That'll open up the menu. Then you go to Inventory and then you can select whatever it is you want, like these blue darts. If I hit the E button, it will then give it to him in his inventory, which I can take out anytime I want. And I can just continue to give him things until his uh, his mass. Also, he can carry 135 pounds. So, you know, you, you can load him up all you want. And once you get back to the ship, take it off of him, put it back onto you, take it off of you, put it back on the ship. Simple stuff. Very easy. Now, just for fun, I want to show you guys a fun sequence break in the game. So the way it works is when we enter the roof here, we come out of this door, we take a few steps forward, we hit a cutscene wall where we encounter the space pirate dude over here and we can talk to him or fight him, whatever you want to do. But what I did was, as soon as I opened the door, I fast traveled to the ship over here and now I've run back over here near this ledge and uh, check it out, I can get behind him, which is pretty funny. Now normally, you can't run fast enough to make the jump and we don't have our jetpacks yet, there's no way to get that. But, with the help of AMP, which we looted earlier, we can consume one of those, increase our running speed by 35%, and our jump height, so here we go. I missed the jump, actually, but hey, that's fine, we run so fast, we can, you know, try it once again. And uh, we're already back up on the ledge, and then here we are, now we're behind them. We can go ahead and sneak up on them now, and, uh, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, if you want to just fight them without the cutscene, that's one way to do it. Uh, and right now, like, let's say I had pickpocketing. And there we go, it turns them around. Pretty funny stuff. But besides sequence breaking, here's what it's supposed to actually look like. You go through the door, we're on the roof, and before technically you could shoot at them, uh, the cutscene will play right about there. What I advise that you do is that you go with the persuasion route so we can set up a legendary farm through save scumming. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to hit persuade. And uh, I'm just going to play the persuasion mini game here. Try to hit him with a three. There we go. Hit him with the one. And didn't get it that time. Got it that time. So I can try it. All right. So we got him. Now, what this did is it makes him non hostile. So I can walk up to him. And uh, what I'm just going to do is set, set the stage here a bit. So we're going to take some explody barrels and we're just going to just kind of let them hang out. Just <laughs> Again, we're, we're setting up uh, the one shot here. So grabbing more explosion barrels and let's see. I could rotate that just like that. There we go. And yeah, he's kind of a he's kind of a dickhead, but hey, that's fine. So whatever. We're just going to we're just going to give him a bunch of explosion barrels here. Uh, right behind him, so we so it launches forward right at our feet. You know we have to plan this out very nice. Well, if I can set it set her down nice and steady, there it is. I think there's one more here in the corner. Maybe not. That's more than enough. And uh, we're gonna go ahead. Oh, we got one right here. There it is. And one more. This is overkill, by the way. But uh, <laughs> whoops. Well, you get you get the idea, right? Come back here. We don't, we need all we can get. You only really need three of these to kill them on normal. I don't know what it is on very hard, but we shall find out. Okay, so we're all set up. So we're gonna set up a quick save, and I'm gonna teach you the next part. So every t this is a boss fight, by the way. This this Brogan guy is the first boss of the game, and he has a very good loot table. This means that you can farm him for legendaries. Not that we need it. We just I just want a legendary for more money. Money's more important early on. So all we're going to do is uh, shoot the explosion barrel behind him. That's going to send him flying and uh, just go ahead and finish him off here. All right, down he goes. So let's check his loot. Bashing Eon, that sucks. I'm going to hit F9 to quick load, of course. And we're just going to rinse and repeat over and over and over here. It might be faster if I uh, set up a gun. Just a quick, you know, just pop a cap in him. There we go. Hit the quick save. Pop him once again. There he goes into the stratosphere. Uh, just, you know, pops some bullets this time again. Only a blue. We don't want a blue. I'm going to sit here and reload until I get something good and then show you. Something expensive. And here we are after just two kills. Two two tries. We got a legendary. Now check this out. This is a mechanized star roamer spacesuit. Now, 
we're we're gonna loot something way way better in the next like 10 to 15 minutes but this thing is worth you know 3k his gun not so much why can actually get something worth a little bit more he can drop legendary weapons which are worth way more than a legendary spacesuit so i can sit here and keep rolling and rolling until i get something good or I can just take what he's got now and then continue on. Th this is just optional. You don't have to do this. It's just something that you can do if you decide you want to. Also, this ship lands and a bunch of dudes come out. So make sure, don't fall too far. You might break your ankles. Uh, and uh, jump on that ship and loot the stuff before it flies away. But uh, I'm just going to switch to uh, laser beams here. And uh, we're just going to fry them. Also, they're stuck in the in the ground, so that makes it a little easy. As long as I'm in the ship, it won't take off. <laughs> oh no, they can't fight back. <laughs> oh, that poor dude. Anyway, I'm just gonna, you know, yoink the med pack, of course. And I'm gonna finish these up, and then it's off to the next area. Now, before you're about to land on the new planet here called Jemison, select random ships flying around, and try to find one that says Trader on it, and then hail them. So this is a trade ship. You can trade with them, which is kind of interesting how you can just trade through space. And uh, here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to hit sell and then sell from ship inventory. We're going to go to misc and we're just going to do left click about 20, 25 times. Let's do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You see that right there, that commerce buy or sell, buy or sell 25 unique items. So we're going to just, uh, you know, pump that up. There we go. So we're at 19 out of 25. And we don't want to go over. 25 out of 25. There it is. Okay, so we can close the menu now. And there it is. That's all we need from them for now. And then we can go ahead and land on the planet and continue as normal. Now, once you've land on the planet, just continue the main story quest as normal. Follow the blue markers on your map. I'll tell you when we're going to divert course and break the, the game. Once you get to this part in the story where Sarah asks you if you want to go ahead with the game, tell her this is all a little much. I need some time to clear my head. This will let you free roam essentially, though the game doesn't tell you that that's available yet. So she gives you a big old pile of money and a lodge key. And also a level up, which is very important for what we're about to do. So, you should be level 4 by now if you've killed every single thing in sight. Also, the Lodge Key allows you to go into the basement and have access to every crafting bench in the game. The research table, by the way, is in the middle. We don't need any of this because we're just going to go steal and loot all the best gear. But uh, you can grab a med kit there if you want. And let's just quick save. So the first thing you should do now, because you're level 4, you'll have two skills to allocate. What you want to do is go to Commerce and level that up. Now we have to buy or sell 75 unique items, which that's what we spent the early part of the game gathering up. All that junk inside our trunk is about to get sold, and we're going to level up our mercantile so that we can earn even more money and buy things even cheaper. So now I've pushed Ilm to go to my map. And I'm just going to teleport back to the ship, and that's just going to put me right in front of a vendor kiosk that I can now use to uh, go to the next level, essentially. So, here we are. We're going to exit the ship. And as soon as you exit the ship, there is this green machine on the very right here. I always do quick saves so I don't mess up any menus here, but we're going to go to the Trade Authority kiosk. And then I'm going... I have it automatically set to sell. And, uh... Looks like I can't... Oh, here it is. There it is. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go buy, and then buy, and then sell, and then sell from ship inventory, because we put all our junk in the ship. I'm going to go to MISC, and again, we're just going to... Just... Just sell. It's fine. Just sell everything you got. And this does take time, but look at that. Buy or sell 75 unique items. It's pumping up. I'm using both my E button and my left click. And let's... We don't want to go too far. There. Oh, I think we did a little too much there. All right, so it made the noise that we did it. We're gonna go back to our screen here, level up commerce again with our next skill point. Now we have to do 150 unique items. Let's go ahead and uh, reopen the kiosk once again. Sell from ship inventory, miscellaneous, and here we are. This is, uh, this is how we level. <laughs> All that junk, not only is it making us money, and we have a lot of money right now too. It, it's a pretty good amount. Uh, next up is uh, 
you, you gotta be a little careful with this. Resources are actually very useful. I don't recommend that you mass sell these. Even though everything in here, we can buy. And also, we can simply, um, you know, we, we, we can buy later. There's other ways to, um, to, <laughs> to, to meet our goals, which I will show you in a little bit, because we're going to do some shopping. So our next step is to get our mercantile you know, finished off. So just go into every shop, essentially. We're going to go to the coffee shop, and we're going to buy one of everything. It's pretty cheap. Like, these are only, uh, how much are they? 63 each. So just buy one. Don't buy, don't buy a whole stack. <laughs> All right, I think I missed one, but that's fine. It's whatever. Then we just walk away from the store and go to the next store over here and then buy, again, one of everything. We're, we're going to sell it back. It's fine. And uh, this is very important before we start stealing and grabbing very high value items to pump up our money and to buy very powerful ammo. So this does take a little bit of time. But what I like to do is when I go to a store... I just buy one bullet of every ammo type, which um, would set off alarm flags or alarm bells in real life if you were to do this at an, an ammo store. Never do this in real life. Uh, they'll be calling authorities on you. But uh, in the video game, we're just doing it to, you know, raise our mercantile. So there we go. That's nine right there. What about, uh, we want cheap stuff. Apparel? You know, we could buy one of all of these. That's fine. They're pretty darn cheap. These are just... Uh, jacket stuff we can go to aid and we can buy one of these these are actually somewhat useful they're a little some of them are a little bit more expensive uh you can also buy the notes they're pretty cheap we have plenty of money next up would be uh resources here these these are the most useful things so i'm just gonna buy one of everything here and uh i'm i'm not gonna record the whole thing but you get the idea go to every shop buy one of everything Alright, so my game actually crashed and I had to start over, and instead of going and buying one of everything, I just sold one of most of my resources and one of most of my aids. So I never had to go out and buy anything anyway, but you could. But uh, there we go. Now, we don't have a skill point yet to level up the last point part of commerce, but we're going to get that very, very soon. Also, if, you've tr if you're trying to fast travel out after you've talked to Sarah and told her that you want some time to think about it, by going to the map and trying to leave the planet, the, the game technically won't let you yet because it wants you to talk to Sarah and continue the main story quest. But all you have to do to bypass this, and I'm pretty sure this is intentional, it just isn't coded right, is you go to your cockpit and you have to manually go to take off and watch the little screen where your ship uh, blasts off into space. And once you're in space, you are now allowed to free roam the entire game. You are now allowed to go anywhere where you can technically survive. And uh, the way this game kind of gatekeeps you from the end level content, so you can't exactly go to a level 90 zone and just grab something out of a chest, is if you try to get there, you're going to be attacked by space pirates and they will just instantly blow up your ship. But uh, I know some safe routes to get to some very high level zones. And uh, some zones are listed as high level, but they're not really. But we're going to go get a super powerful weapon, and we have money for ammo, and uh, it's going to be really nice. I'm going to show you how to do it. So here is where we're going to go. We're going to open the star map, and we're going to z zoom out, zoom out again. Currently, we're in the Alpha Centauri system. We're going to go up and left a bit to the Sol system, or Sol, I don't know how to pronounce it. We're going to uh, click that, and no, we're not, we're not actually going to Sol. We're going to Velo, so from Saul is top right up here at N Narion, that's where we started the game. But we're going to go to Velo instead, which is kind of in the same zone, and then we're going to jump there. And uh, that'll take just a little bit of time, clickety-clack, and oh, we have to power up our uh, grav engine, I always forget. So power down laser, power up grav, and we, we're in safe zones, we won't be attacked by pirates. You don't have to worry about doing any, any kind of space combat this entire video. Does, shouldn't involve space combat, so we should be good there. And instead of cutting the footage, you're just gonna have to eat the loading screen. I'm sorry, but uh, here we are. We're in Velo. We're gonna open. We're gonna wait for the scan to happen. We have no contraband. Later, we're getting a ship where we can have contraband, and when they scan us, they won't be able to detect any. So, let's see. Is this? There's Polvo. So we're gonna open the map, and we're going to click Hope Town. That's right. We're going to Hope Town. This is just a settlement. This is not an actual city. So you're not going to get lost. It's very e easy to make your way around this. And we're going to do a little bit of exploiting to get 
an, a very overpowered weapon that you wouldn't normally see in, in areas until your high 50s. That's right, the weapon we're about to go grab, you normally don't get access to until you're in your mid to high level 50s. But we're level 4, and we can wait. We can we can equip it, we can shoot it, and we can afford it. Sorta. Of. Well, I'll show you what I mean by that. So, we're in Hope Town. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick save here. And, uh, we're gonna run forward, and it's storming right. I've never seen it storm here. Interesting. Alright, and then to the right is the ranger station. We're gonna continue along this path. And to the right is the best defense store. Now, before we do any shenanigans in the store, I'm gonna talk to the shopkeeper. We're gonna see if he has what I like to call a daily driver. This is a gun that we will use when we're not using our super overpowered expensive stuff. So I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna skip his dialogue until it lets me talk to him and open his shop. Let's see what you have. All right, so first things first, let's check his weapons. And there's one specific weapon you should check everything you kill for and every shop you encounter. And it is a modified Grendel, which is right here. However, well, this one actually works. Okay, so there's a few mods we're looking for. This one half works. This one is a semi-automatic Grendel. That's exactly what we want. However, I would also prefer one with armor penetrating rounds. That's the golden goose. But this is good enough. I'm going to go and buy it for a thousand. Now, the, the thing with the Grendels is they are very cheap on ammo. Everybody you kill is going to have ammo for this gun. Now, normally the... Uh, I'm going to buy a regular... Hold on, no I'm not. I'm going to show you the power of the Grendel real quick through save scumming so that you understand how good this gun is. So first off, let me show you the regular Grendel, which is awful, terrible, terrible weapon. Never use the regular Grendel. And then I'm going to show you what semi-automatic does in this game. I, I don't know if it's bugged or if it's intentional, but we're going to equip a regular Grendel. It does three physical damage and it's a semi-automatic. Semi or, I'm sorry, this one is a full auto. So, this is what it looks like. It just, it just blah, blah, blah. And also, wh why does a, why does no one care if I'm shooting guns? Let's go to an incredibly tanky, uh, you know, named character here. This one is Nia Kalu. She's level 30. I'm just gonna just spray into her body. And look at this. This is a full clip. Look how much damage I did to her. Her health is barely tickled, right? I'm only hitting her for like three per bullet. It's, it's really crappy. And uh, let's load game now, because obviously we, we don't want to continue that uh, that dimension where we've hurt an innocent person. Not yet, at least. And uh, did I save after buying that? I did not. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Uh, okay, no. Nope. I'm in the wrong menu here. Modified Grendel. This is simply semi-automatic. It's the exact same gun, except now when I pull the trigger, it shoots one bullet at a time, so I have to left-click multiple times. You may think, well, that sucks. How can that possibly be better? And it is in so much regard. So here we go. Same character. Now look at my damage. 18, 18, 18, 18. And it stuns her. It's stun locking her. She can't exactly fight back. Look at my, look at her. She's about to die on a single clip. Now, obviously, I missed some, some shots. But you can see the DPS difference is it's night and day, right? I put three to four magazines at, at full auto into her, and I barely chunked her at all. Whereas the semi-auto almost killed her completely. That's why we want that gun. Now, the, the guns are randomized in the shops. When you play, this character may not have that gun for sale. So you just have to check random shops and bodies and corpses until you find it. But let me just also add, once you find one that has armor piercing on it, boy oh boy are you, you're just, you're in heaven. Because that weapon will deal even more damage and stun lock and... You can, you can hit people from across zones with it. It's super accurate. It's one of the best guns in the game. And you're never going to run out of ammo. It's everywhere. It's so cheap to maintain and have. So let me show you an example of a really good daily driver gun right here. It's the exact same one. This is a Grendel with armor, piercing rounds, and semi-automatic. I also have suppressor for sneaking and a bunch of other stuff on it. But uh, essentially, this is the kind of weapon that you eventually want to grab. It is insanely powerful. I'm just going to fire into the gra the crowd and shoot some guards and show you just just how stupid this, this weapon truly hey. is. So, uh, obviously, the, the civvies, they don't do much, but the security guards here, uh, <laughs> they take huge amounts of damage. They're taking 40 on headshots, and, you know, you have the ammo to spare. This thing is great for clearing out, you know, camp settlements. Just whatever you want. It just it makes such short work of everything that you do it with. 
and like I said, the ammo is just infinite. You're never not gonna have ammo. Like, when I kill these guys, boom, 22 bullets, easy. Every single thing that you kill is gonna have this ammo. It's so common. You absolutely want a semi-auto Grendel. It's overpowered. Anyway, back to getting the most broken overpowered weapon ever. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open his back door here, which he doesn't seem to mind or care. Also, it's kind of annoying that this guard is, like, standing in the way here. Sometimes you can kind of, like, run into them and they will mosey away. You can also sit in the chair and wait. But, uh, we're gonna grab this trash can, and sometimes this bugs out and, and, uh, counts as stealing. But let's see what happens. Okay, n nothing happened. No one's angry. I've got this trash can here. Nice. Right? And so what we're gonna do is we're going to... You see these two guns on these shelves? Well, not that one. We can just yoink that one off the shelf. This one... We're just gonna knock it off the shelf there, and ooh, that's not- that's a bad spot in here. Let's try to scoop it this way, and oh no. Okay, we're gonna have to load game, because that one is a- I'm not getting that one out of the corner ever. There's- it's stuck. So yeah, we have to load that one. Ooh boy. So let's try this again, and I have the trash can in my hand, and we have the gun on the floor. We're just gonna sweep it. Just, just sweep it. <laughs> just kick it- kick, yes. kick it around on the ground, as awkward as this is. Only place there we are. Uh, a little too hard. Okay. Here, let's squat down. And you gotta play like ping pong with it. We got this person in the way, but we can still kind of make it work. And what we're gonna do is, uh, oh, I, I don't have the door open on my quick save. All right, open the door. Don't touch the gun. Make sure that you don't ever lay hands on this, or otherwise it's over. And we're just gonna we're just gonna knock it over here into the corner. There we go. Let go of the trash can, and we're gonna shut the door. So no one can see us, no one's looking at us, we're in sneak mode, make sure you're crouched, and then we're gonna pick it up. There we go, mission accomplished, we just got one of the strongest guns in the early game that you're ever gonna get. Next up, we're gonna stand over here, make sure no one's looking at us, like of course the shopkeeper is. Do a quick save, we're gonna crouch, and we're going to try to yoink this one off the shelf. On the very pixel, there it is. Okay, so they saw that, I'm gonna quick load, and we're gonna rinse and repeat, if you still can't get it, if like... The NPCs are staring at you. You can sit on a chair and wait an hour. Or you can just try... Uh, like, this NPC has got eyes on me. So, that sucks. So, again, we could just grab the trash can and scoot it along the ground and hide it from that, their view. Or I can sit here in the chair and then I can wait one hour for the NPC to maybe mosey along. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Nope, she didn't. She's still there staring at me. So, we'll go six hours. You know, just wait. <laughs> And eventually they'll, they'll, they'll get tired and go home or, you know, follow their local whatever the heck. And if that's, again, if that still doesn't work, just use the trash can method. But normally you can snatch that one off the shelf pretty, pretty quick. Obviously this person is sus as hell, and so they're not moving. Sometimes you can grab the trash can and you can put it over their head and then they can't see you. But uh, it doesn't always work and also it falls off sometimes. But... Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just trash can method this one into the back room, shut the door, and yoink it off the floor. So we've stolen the two weapons, and the, they are amazing guns. The, they're called the Advanced Mag Shear. Now, right here is the ammo type, 0 .50 MI. We're gonna go ahead and equip one. And then this is where a lot of the early money that we have comes into play, because we're gonna buy some ammo from this man. We're gonna go to ammo, we're gonna go to the .50 MI array. These things are 200 and, uh, no, they're 32 per bullet, and we can buy 240 bullets. 7.6k, that's like half our money, essentially. It's worth it. You're, we're gonna buy another set of, of ammo in a bit with the rest of our money, because we're gonna, we're gonna blow through this ammo like crazy. So let's go ahead and load it in. And I'm gonna show you how much damage this does, just so you can see why we bought this, or why we stole this. And I'm also gonna show you how to unsteal it later, so we don't get it confiscated. But I'm gonna do a quick save here, and we're back once again at this NPC, and we're just, just watch her health, just, just goodbye health bar, it's gone. And look at look, look at that, it only took like 20 bullets. But the way the way you want to use this weapon is you want to just tap fire, just just light little taps. Also, she revives, so like tap tap tap. That way you're not wasting any bullets, and it will look. She just revived once again. She is uh, unkillable. She's like a vampire or something. But uh, yes, that weapon alone will let us go to very high level zones and just delete the enemies with with no fuss no no mess and also we can sell the other one for a huge chunk of money so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna travel back to the original planet by pushing elm zooming out a few times going down here to alpha centauri clicking that and then we're going to go to the jemison planet here 
we're going to click uh, New Atlantis Explored. Uh, I'm carrying too much. I'm over encumbered. So I actually have to manually go to the ship and then do it. Uh, that's fine. Uh -huh. And I could also store the weapons on the ship. It's not a big deal. So, again, ship super close to the shop. Let's get her done. I'll meet you there. <laughs> All right, I've done some inventory management. I've gotten my weight down to 34. Let's uh, let me show you where to go now. We're going to go to the star map, and we're going to zoom all the way out to the uh, entire solar system here. Go to Alpha Centauri, click this. Here we are. Click on Jemison. And then we're going to go to New Atlantis, and then land. And uh, that's going to put us back on the planet, back where we originally started. We're going to go to another weapons shop, and we're going to, we're going to steal a couple things. Then we're going to clean the stealing off of them so that they're unstolen. And then we're, we're basically going to sell it and then buy a bunch of ammo. So, I'm going to show you where to run to now. And this place looks wild at night. I have not seen the city at night. It's very lit up. But, uh, yeah, crazy. So, again, remember, as you're traveling, and just follow my path, uh, what we're going to do is we're not going to take the tram to get to the item shops. We're actually going to take an elevator. And I'm just jumping so I can conserve O2, or stamina. And it looks like I've run out of stamina, so now it becomes CO2, which is silly. It's like, this sh you shouldn't be stamina drained on a planet. They, I guess it was too hard to program. Anyway, so in between the coffee shop and whatever this shop is, it's like a food store, I guess, is an elevator. And we're going to take the elevator to a place called The Well. And once we're down here, there's two things we're going to do. We're going to steal miniguns. And then we're going to clean the stealing of all of the guns that we took. So this is the UC surplus. This is uh, where we're going to buy more ammo, but we need more money. And so I'm going to do just a quick save here and make sure everything's cool. We're going to open this weapon case up. Opening the case does not cause, you know, crime stat. And because, like, here's the shop owner, this guy in the red here. But make sure there's no one else also in the store. Uh, if you can, close the door so people on the outside don't catch you in the act. We're gonna stand behind the sign, we're gonna crouch, he can't see us, and we're going to yoink the micro gun, and he caught me, so we're gonna load the game. And we're gonna we're gonna try this a few more times. Otherwise, there's a few things we can do to lure him into the back room. And uh, once again, let me get the room set up a little oh, we have a person here, so that maybe they saw me. Um sometimes if there's people, they will see you, but we're gonna crack this open. Crack this open. Also, this guy's very fidgety with his stuff. I'm gonna do a quick save. He will uh, like stand up sometimes, and you can shove this guy. By the way, you can push him around. You can, uh, if, if you stand near him and run towards him, he will back up sometimes. There he goes. And what you can do is you can just kind of put him in the closet here if you want. That's another alternative. Uh, but other than that, you can't scoop these out of the boxes. They are bolted in there, so we have to just rely on being a thief. So it looks like he, he's being a little jank, right? He's uh. It's like he's following me. So we can maybe get him, get, get him, yeah, he, I don't know why he's following us. Follow me into the closet. But you have to play around with them, but we can get these mini guns. They're, they're not super expensive. You can kind of skip this step if it's taken too long, but try to steal the two mini guns. The mini guns, by the way, I guess I should show you, is uh, there's one right here, and uh, well, they're called micro guns, and one right there. You don't need to steal the ammo. We're not gonna use them. We're just doing it for money. It's just fast and easy money. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and steal them now. Once you've stolen the two miniguns, go ahead and buy you some .50 MI arrays. Again, 8,300. We have 8,900. That's fine. We're down to 650, but hey, we have high mercantile, so we get more value for the things we sell. We still have a lot of stuff to sell, so let me show you how we're going to clean these guns and sell them. And so once you leave the shop, if you go left up these stairs, this is the elevator where we came in from. Just for reference... So, you leave the elevator, and then to your right is the surplus store, which we just robbed and bought from. And then to our left, down the stairs, and down this hallway is another shop. So when we go here, we're going to take a right, and we're going to see this Trade Authority sign. We're going to go inside here, and it looks all fancy business with guards and stuff, which... I don't know the lore, but essentially these guys, they buy stolen goods, and then they sell them back to you for the same price. So it's basically a free service. I'm just going to skip her dialogue here, and then I'm going to see, I'd like to see what you have for sale. So this is how it works. You're going to go to sell in the bottom right, and then you're going to go to your weapons, and the, these, these have a red icon. So 
what stolen items do in this game is if a guard, if you anger a guard, like you steal something or you punch somebody, a guard will take all of your stolen stuff out of your inventory. They just know somehow. But this is how you clean it so they won't ever know. Uh, so we're going to sell that item and then these two items. Also, I need to sell for my ship inventory because I have another mag shear in there. There we are. And yes, I know we have one more level of mercantile to go, but, um, you know, uh, whatever it's called. Don't exit the menu. Don't exit the menu or you lose that stuff. So go back to buy, scroll down, and you have this buy back box. Now we're going to buy back our advanced mag shear. And uh, there we go. I don't need to buy those back because uh, the whole purpose of grabbing them was to steal them anyway. And so now I have a super weapon with two big things of ammo, 7,362 credits to my name, and it's time to go to some high level zones with our powerful gun and um, just basically win the game at this point. But I, there's there's another thing in, play, in testing, you know, because I did a lot of testing before I made this guide that I, I want to share with you. And that is how to get more ammo because we just bought out this dude's entire stock of ammo. Well, all you have to do is wait two days. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna save first in case something glitches, but I'm gonna sit down next to him and he's gonna, he's gonna chat with me, I guess. And I'm just gonna hit the wait button and then I'm gonna wait 24 hours and I'm gonna do that one more time after this. And then when we go back to his inventory, he will have restocked all of that ammo. Unfortunately, the items on the store shelves never restock, to my knowledge. I've I've waited one week, two weeks, three weeks. I've left the zone and came back, flew to other planets, came back. I can't get them to refresh the guns on their display cases. I have now waited two in-game days. We're going to talk to the sales clerk now once he's done sitting down. Since I can't talk to him while he's in that animation. And uh, what we're going to do is, since I don't have enough money for another set of ammo, I don't think... Let's, let's check. The... He did not... Oh, there it is. I thought he didn't restock. So I... Oh, I actually... Wow! Look at that! I, I, I had two credits left over. I did not plan that. It's completely random how much he restocks his ammo. I'm, I swear. Uh, but that is, that is so cool. I have two dollars to my name. But we got plenty of ammo. But I, wa I want more. I really want more. So I'm going to sell from the ship inventory now. I'm going to sell all these weapons that we got. Um, I have four cutters. I don't need any in my sh I have one on me. I don't need any on the ship. I don't need any of this stuff. So we're just going to just going to sell and 11 of those and there we go. Again, we're we're going to restock this amount so fast. All right, and then spacesuits. I don't need this. Don't need any of those. 9684 credits and remember, we have level 3 of uh I forget the skill. I keep calling it mercantile because that's what it is in other games. Uh, it is commerce, level three commerce. So, <laughs> you know, we're getting a pretty damn good deal, right? And so I'm going to go wait two more days and buy some more ammo and uh, I will be right back. And that should be more than plenty. Now in testing, I had a strategy where I only killed half the enemies in the places we're going to and then ran from the other half and just looted. But it was really hard to do. And I like to make my guides as easy as possible for people that are not good at video games, people that are young, or people that are just, they're lazy and they don't want to try hard. That's what my guides are for. That's what my whole YouTube channel is about. So I'm making this as easy and as simple and as dumb as possible so that you guys can just go in there and then rat-a-tat-tat -tat all the enemies down. You can spend all as much time as you want looting. You don't have to, you know, bunny hop around corners and shut doors in front of robot mechs that are trying to pounce and kill you. I've got you covered. All right, so this is the fourth time we're buying ammo, and cha-ching. Down to 1,300 credits, that's fine. We're about to go kill some high-level mobs, loot them all, sell their stuff, and get a bunch of levels, and we're going to uh, we're gonna need those levels. Also, another thing, too, um, that I need to point out is every chance you get, I, uh, you need to be buying digi-picks. So we're going to go into this guy's menu. He might have some, I forget, but um, is it under aid? No, it's not under aid. It would be under misc, and it, it's uh, it's the little hacking tool used to lockpick things. So now it's time to get digipix, and we need a bunch because we're gonna be opening a whole lot of stuff. So here's Terra Brew, and then here is the uh, I forget what this store is called, but um, talk to the lady. A bit more in the back if you're... 
Oh, There's please. more in the back. There's never more in the back. That's a lie. I buy the Digipix, and again, they reset every two days, but we there's another store that carries way more than this one. I'm just picking them up because it's on the way. Next up, we're going to hop on the tram and go to the residential district, and we can get more Digipix at a time from one vendor there. We're going to do that a couple times until we have about 20. That's overkill, but uh, it really does save time later, so we might as well do it now. I'll, I'll cut till we get there. Slight error correction, they have removed the Digipix from a lot of the stores, made them a little bit harder to get. So there's only two stores left in this city that sell them. This one, uh, the store to the left of the coffee shop here. Uh, I believe it's called Apex Mercantile, that's why where I keep saying mercantile. But we have to go back to the well, and there's an electronics store that sells them, so I will meet you there. So let me show you how to get there from the elevator, because that's how I, I do things. When you leave the elevator, this is your view. You got the surplus store on your right. On the left was that uh, the trade authority store. If we go forward a bit, and then we turn left in the middle, there's the trade authority again. Here is the Apex Electronics, so we're going to go inside and buy some Digipix, and then we're going to wait and buy more. No, Lord, can't say so, what do you got for sale? And then we go to Misk, and then Digipix. He's got seven of them for sale. We're going to buy those. And then we have to wait two days until he gets more by just sitting around. And uh, is there room for me to set? Unfortunately, no. He's uh, occupying the seat. Let's see. We gotta. We just gotta find a seat to bum around on for for a whole couple days. I'll just sit. I'll just sit here on the bench and uh, skip two days. Also, yes, I realize I could have went and bought Digipix while I bought ammo, but um, I usually buy them from a different store. But I guess this way works better. I have rested many days on this bench next to... Oh, she's gone now. My bench partner has left. But I've got 27 Digipix from the vendor. It's time to go. We're going to open the map now. Zoom out until we get to the big map here. We're going to go to the Sol system, finally. And uh, we're going to go ahead and jump there. Here we go. Thanks a minute. We're going to get scanned. We're going to wait for the scan. I don't think we have to wait for the scan if we're not landing on a planet. But anyway, scan done. We're going to zoom out. And uh, here's planet Earth. Check it out. Next to Earth is this weird little icon. And it's really hard to target. So you got to be really precise. Nova Galactic Star Yard. We're going to travel there. And um, <laughs> technically, it's... it's it's marked as a level 50 zone, but don't worry, it's not actually level 50. It was changed. It's actually around level 8 to 15. And uh, we're going to select the station, and you can hail it, nothing happens, it's just static. Also, you can crash into these things and nothing happens, so don't be afraid to just full throttle into it. When we get close enough, the dock button appears, so we're going to hold R and dock. And yeah, it, you can see on the tooltip, it was is showing a level, this is a level 50 space station. Don't worry, though, it's not. And we're not going to spend a lot of time here. We're just going to pick up one little quest item. We're going to board now. And for this part, we're going to equip our daily driver. We're not using our mag shear. We're going to use our modified grindle. If you don't have the grindle, just use the mag shear. We got enough ammo for it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the modified grindle. I'm going to show you exactly where to go here. Go ahead and loot everything along the way because we're going to, again, you know, we like money. You don't have to loot this stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and open the door here. This enters the zone. I'm going to save first. I'm going to quick save. And then we're going to enter the zone here. Wait for the loading screen. And let me show you where we need to go exactly and who we need to kill. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a tiny bit of grinding to unlock uh, a, a level so we can lockpick a little bit better. And here at the Nova Galactic, we're going to take a hard right. And then we're going to kind of follow this little path. We're not going to the dining hall. We're going to go in here. And there's two factions fighting. And what I recommend is just killing everyone in sight. Again, you could use your mag shear if you want. They give really good XP. Like, that's 10. I'm about to be... I'm about to get a level up. But these Upalictic guys, they're pretty strong. They are they are level 10. They have a lot of health and their guns hurt. So, you know, you can take it slow. You can take it chill. But uh, this guy's is apparently in cover. <laughs> and... Uh, He's still getting hit. Now, on the right are spacers. We'll take, we will take. need to take them out. The, the epileptic guys are just for XP. So, And uh, 
You will be coming back here later. I'm not going to spoil anything, but you do have to come here at one point in the game. So if you kill them now, it's less work later. So you might as well just mop them up real quick. Also, uh, if you kill them instead of the enemy, you can get the XP. I'm about to level up. If you see the gray bar in the middle of the screen, it slowly fills up with how close you are to your next level. So just a few more kills, I should be level 5. There we go, level 5. Alright. So, I, we're concerned with looting the spacer guys. That's uh, the, the people on the right side. So we're going to take a right. And you can see, like, I have tons of bullets. I'm about to get tons more when I loot these guys. But for now, we're just going to take them down. And I swear, oh, that one was already wounded. This one's got a lot of health bars. But again, we just kind of stun lock them. It's not a big deal. Take our time. We, we have 100 bullets. There's another one in there. Take them out. We got plenty of bullets, plenty of ammo on the ground available for us. Take this one out. And again, if you have the mag share, these things are dying in, in like, you barely left click and they're dead. They're, they are not a threat. So let's go back to where we were and uh, let's start looting because uh, we're a little bit low on ammo, but you can see here, there we go, 43 bullets from that guy. Another 22 from that one. And it looks like there's still more alive. There we go. 38 bullets there. And yeah, I'm taking a lot of damage here, so I'm just gonna back off. I really don't want to use a health pack, but you know, there's one on the wall. I might as well just make the most of it. And oh, I rebound my key to one instead of zero. It defaults to zero. I rebound it to one. It's pretty easy to do. Go. Take them out, grab some ammo. Again, these guys are good for the Grindel ammo. Now that's two... Here's the thing, right? The way it, it works is if you're not... Uh, if you stand in front of them, they will ammo dump on you and you're just basically dead. So we don't want to do that. We don't even have to fight them right now anyway. They're not really why we're here. And that's a legendary. We can sell that. Sure, why not? Sell the blue. Why not? We can store it in the ship. It's not a big deal. Uh, let's see. So what we're looking for on the spacer guys... We are looking for, it's called Secret Memo, or Secret Base. And uh, usually you have to get about this far in until they drop it. So, I'm just checking the bodies now. But sometimes you have to go a little deeper. Maybe this one? Oh, okay, so none yet. It's random. It, it's completely random. And, uh, again, just, just keep killing and looting as you go. You'll eventually find it. And uh, I'm, just to make sure I didn't already loot it. Yeah, I don't have any notes down here, so I haven't looted it yet. And we're just going to continue into the dungeon and uh, until we find it. Normally, I find it by now, so this is not good luck. This is, uh, this is actually unusual to have killed this many and not have the drop yet. Which is uh, a little concerning, actually. A little, little worrisome, but hey, that's fine. It's whatever. Those rooms are all clear. Go this way. Did we loot this guy? Secret Outpost. There it is. This guy had it. He's just a regular spacer. He's not a boss or anything. So we loot Secret Outpost. Now, we need to read it. So open your inventory. Go to Notes. And then click Secret Outpost. There we go. Our character has read it. We don't have to actually read it. Then I'm going to push L. Or I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back into the game. Push L. And go to Miscellaneous Quests. We're doing the Mantis Quest. Go to the Secret Outpost at Den... Denebola I or yeah IB and then we're gonna hit set course that's the R button now this is way too far away we don't have enough fuel but we can still do it because what we're gonna do is we're gonna travel to uh, Olympus here we are yeah we're gonna travel to Olympus and we're just gonna jump there there we are we've jumped to Olympus now I'm just gonna again open the map zoom out and uh, zoom this out so we're trying to get to to Crix. Uh, I'm sorry. We're trying to get to Dinabola. Din now I gotta now I gotta travel to Voli. So we'll travel to Voli. And there is a lot of stuff in Voli to lockpick to level up our lockpicking, which uh, is the, our next skill point. By the way, we don't need to max out our uh, <laughs> money making just yet. We're gonna get plenty of levels. And in that area we were just in, you could stay and grind mobs and get a, another level if you want. But you gotta go back there later anyway. So we're gonna go to Voli, and we're gonna we're gonna lockpick some stuff and level up. So let me get a save going, and I'll show you that. 
So our next skill point, like I said, is going into security so we can hack expert locks. There we go. We have 27 digipicks. Now we need to pick 15 locks to be able to hack master level locks. Once we have master level locks unlocked, then we can basically loot every kind of chest and door in the entire game. And um, rank four is just if you're lazy, I guess. First thing we're going to do in Neon is we're going to go hack ATMs. That's right. We're going to be lame and break into some money machines. So when you when you go to when you come to Neon, you're just going to run straight ahead across this rainy wet bridge. And this entire city is basically a, a, a giant ocean built city. It's wild. But um oh, put away our gun. We don't we don't need our weapons out. This guy's getting arrested. That's a quest you can do later or whatever. Uh, we're just going to use the elevator and go down into the main city. This city is very simple to navigate. All the shops are in just one big, long row. And we're looking for the ATM, which is over there where it says bank. So we're going to, as soon as we step out of the elevator, we're going to take, we're going to turn right. Go on the leftmost side of this street. Run all the way down to the bank. And... Here it is, uh, the Gal Bank. So there are, there should be, yeah, there's one, two, three, four. There's six machines to, to hack here. And uh, there is a guard staring, or that's a citizen, just staring at the wall. Another citizen here. These can cause issues, but the fun thing is, is as long as no one's looking at you while you crouch, they will not report it. So technically, I could crouch behind this dude and then just kind of sneak up like this and touch it like that. No one's looking at me except maybe someone from the outside. But as soon as I touch it, it will freeze. And let me show you the easy way to do these. Because you might sit here and scratch your head and be like, Man, this is confusing. It's It just got way harder. It's not. We're going to solve the inner ring first and then the outer ring. And the quickest way to do it is to count the holes. So we got on the inner ring, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes. It will always take two picks to open a circle. So seven holes would be four and three. So that means one of these will be it, and then one of these will be it. So we'll just trial and error. We'll, we'll pick this one and see if we can slot them. No, no. Like, I can already tell. Let's see. No. So this one's out. We know it's this one then. 100% this is the one that will do it. We just have to figure out where it goes. It goes right there. So that one's done. And now it's time to figure out the three slaughters so um let's see if that one definitely goes there then we need kind of a space there and one on the right side so maybe this one nope so this one for sure yep all right so we have the inner circle solved done and we know that it's uh it's this one and this one so now we just solved the outer circle that's three holes four five six holes so outer circle is six holes that's three and three Let's see. Or four and two. It could be four and two. So let's try four and two. That's the easier solution. Let's see if um, this one is. Let's see if this one fits. No. Let's see. No. Yes, that one fits. So two is these two remaining. That would be this one right there. There we go. We got it. And then we just uh, finish her up. Well. Oh no. Oh wait, it's that one. There we go, got it. Now, I've been caught tampering with locks. So here's the thing. It costs 350 money to pay the fine, go to jail, whatever. I'm getting 734. This gets confiscated. Whatever. I had 1700 credits. The owner caught me stealing. Whatever. Okay, so we're gonna walk out. The guard's gonna arrest us. That's totally fine. And then uh, you pay the credits. Stolen items. We didn't have any stolen items. There we go. It teleports us to jail, which is right in front of the bank, which is really funny. And, uh, you know, that's that. We're back to square one. It's not like the guards are going to beat us up or anything or take our stuff. And you can see my credits are 2,092. So we paid the fee with the stolen money. And then he confiscated the rest of the stolen money. And then we just come back. So this one's been hacked already, so it's empty. So we just crouch, and then we just do that again. And you can see here, when I open my... Uh, security tab we have one out of 15 completed so we have to do this 
we can do this at least, uh, what, six more times in here? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I want to show you an even faster tip with the log picking minigame once you've reached this level. So if I click this circle on the right, you'll notice that these two circles are highlighted white. If I click this, it's still highlighted white. But if I click this one, they're both blue. I click this one, they're both blue. If I click this one, they're both blue. If I click this one, only the outside one is blue. So what this means is that these four will fit in the circles, whereas these don't fit. So that will speed things up for you. We can automatically eliminate these two, and then by process of math, we'll do the inner circle first. One, two, three, four holes. So that's two and two. That's two, that's two. Outer circle is also four. So again, we're only gonna be using these four right here because this one will not fit in the, in the, in the inner circle. We already know that wherever this fits, it only goes on the outside. And so there it is. So that's guaranteed. We know that one's there. Next up, this one fits, this one fits. That one only fits on the inner circle. So we know this one only goes on the inside right there, not right there, or right there. One of those two spots, we'll worry about that later. So let's finish up the top here. And uh, we got to be careful and make sure that we uh, <laughs> do the proper one here. So which one shall we use? We can use this one or we can use that one. And uh, let's line up the inner circles. So we have four on the inner. So let's see if that one works. This one is, will always be the inner. These two both work on the outer and inner, so it shouldn't matter. So we go unlock that. And then we have to decide what do we want to do here about this one. We want to do it that way and then that way. Yes, that works. There we go. Did it. Quick and easy. Once you have robbed the ATMs, your progress on security should look like this. 6 out of 15. Now, these don't come back. I've rested for two days, and uh, they, they don't replenish. So what we're going to do is buy some Digipix before we leave, and we're going to go to another city, rob those ATMs. Normally, there's a lot of chests and doors you can open in this city, but it might affect storyline choices and factions. So I'm not going to suggest it in this video. Originally, in my draft, that's what I would tell you to do, but I don't want to mess up anyone's game. So first off is the trade authority, big yellow sign, go in here, talk to this guy, leaning. he should be cleaning, and uh, he's got three digit picks, those refresh every two days, you don't need to stick around. Continue out of the store to the right, down the street, to Newell's Goods, and, uh, well, Newell's cleaning, he's not leaning, and he's got three digit picks. After that, it's time to blow this popsicle st stand, and we're gonna leave and go to another city. And uh, let's go ahead and travel. Yes, you guessed it. We're going back to Alpha Centauri. And then we're going to travel up here to Cheyenne soon. Because from Cheyenne, we can get to Dinabola much faster. It's not showing the... Normally, I can connect from here to Crix. Or, I'm sorry, to Dinabola. But right now, the, the pathfinding is being weird. But there is a city here we're going to rob. But we're going to rob good old Alpha Centauri. <laughs> and uh you know we can fast travel there we don't have to do any kind of loading screens we're going to just uh we're just gonna land at new atlantis there we go and uh i'll show you where the bank is there when you're in new atlantis it's pretty easy to find the bank here's the coffee shop to the right of the coffee shop there's the bank and uh, it's a little bit more on the open uh there's only four kiosks here but uh we're going to pick up the rest in the next town over, and while we're here, we're going to get more Digipix as well. I want to mention that here in New Atlantis, do not get caught robbing these ATMs, because if you do, it starts a side quest, which if you refuse, makes you an enemy of, of an entire faction. So it's a real pain in the butt to rob from this one, but every time you succeed, make sure you save so you don't waste any time. After hacking the ATMs in New Atlantis, we only need four more to push the next level. Let's go get them. The next thing to unlock will be located between the coffee shop and this shop. We're going to go back down to the well. Go ahead and confirm that. And uh, this one is actually a fight. I'm not sure what the purpose is, um, but I'm sure it might be a side quest or story related, but we're gonna take, we're gonna go down the stairs and take a hard left. Ever 
and just kind of follow the left wall all the way down. Keep going and up these stairs, I believe is the correct way. Up more stairs, there is a locked door. We're going to hit the switch and unlock this door. And then we're going to continue to stay on the left side here. Another locked door. We're going to hit the switch to, again, unlock the door. And then, right up here, this door unleashes... Uh, there's a there's like a robot dog in there, so beware. It's level 12. I'm going to just go ahead and equip our mag shear and destroy it very, very quickly. Let's go ahead and crack this lock. Oh, something like that. This one is also only for the first lock. there that one goes there and voila we did it so angry robot dog he's right in there you can see how my lasers are turning red when i'm touching his foot I'm getting out of there we go down he goes real easy fight <laughs> because we have this weapon also everyone in town is now screaming in terror because of the dog but uh it's fine <laughs> it's totally fine uh, they, they, we didn't aggro them. Uh, the dog was a bad enemy anyway. And you can see every, everyone's okay. The children are safe. They're just... Nothing happened. They're all just kind of looking at me though. Like, what, do you, what did you do? So that's, uh, that's the next lock. I will show you the next lock box now. From the entrance of the elevator, we come out. There's the J... Was that? JC Surplus. We're going to run straight ahead though this time. And we're going to go down this exit hallway. There's a fan there spinning. And we're through the hallway there is a green medical thing on our left we're going to keep running straight you're going to see this ominous gray door here we're going to turn left there's a door here with a light above it go up the stairs up the stairs again and here we are at the next safe very simple stuff not really much in here let's see if we can crack this one very quickly that's for the last one and let's see, one, two, three, four, five, the five until so that's a three, two. Go ahead and pop that there. Pop that there. This one goes somewhere like this. There it is. Last one. Got it. All right, free money. Always good to have. Yay. There is one more bank to rob in this town. So we say goodbye to the coffee shop. We move to the right. The bank we robbed earlier is there. There's the tram. We're going to take the tram now to the Mast District. Oh boy, I'll meet you there. Once you leave the tram, you will see a long hallway with decorations around you. We're going to hug the left wall. And then we're going to round the corner here to the left, following the path along this river thing. On. Up top, you'll see Commercial District. If you look even higher up, you see the Gal Bank giant building. If you look ahead, you'll see Outland and some green tinted buildings there. This is the entrance to the Gal Bank corporate office. And they have ATM well, machines have right outside of it. So, yes, again, remember, make sure you, you save your game because if you get caught here, you get thrown into a side mission, which you may or may not want to do. So again, quick save, full save. What I like to do is I'll quick save, rob one when it succeeds. I'll full save, rob one when it succeeds, quick save. So I can always reload. It turns out that the bank ATMs can be impossibly hard because there are just so many people around and the guards just have, I don't know, psychic powers. So let me show you some other easier ones to get to. If you teleport to your ship, we're just gonna teleport straight to the ship here. And uh, there is a novice computer behind it, which we can unlock. There's also an expert lock to unlock, but unless you've had something seized, there's nothing in it. I'll show you. So once you exit your ship, just turn around and then run straight behind it to this storage A area. And uh, it can get a little tricky here because there is a patrolling guard who will just chill. There's also this guy. And uh, right now, if I'm quick enough, I should be able to hack it without anyone seeing me. And let's see if we can nab this. All right, we'll do... I need a kind of a Y split. Maybe that one. 
This one might be a little trickier, but um, let's roll with that, and then we'll go with this. That does it. And this one shall be... I think... No, that... that. Yeah, that, that'll work. And got it. Alright, so this just opens a door into a storage a closet area. Your eyes open and watch your step, okay, okay, he didn't tattle on me. <laughs> he doesn't seem to care. He doesn't get paid enough. There is a quest package in there that you can grab. It does not count as stealing, so feel free to grab that. Now, uh, this guard here, if he does see us mess with this computer, he will get us. And like I said, if you aggro the guards in this town, they will send you on a side quest, which you may not want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and quick save. The other one is right here, the seized cargo. Now, this is an expert lock. Where did that guard go? Okay, go into sneak mode and touch it. So if you want to challenge this, you can. It's a lot harder. It's really not that much harder, but there is another easy one I can show you. Next up, we will go from the favorite, everyone's favorite bank next to the tram here. Some of these are really hard to get. I'm going to admit, they're really hard to get. You have to sometimes sit and wait, and hopefully the guards don't look your way or the civilians don't stare at you as you rob them. You're going to go to the residential district next, and we're going to rob an apartment building. Not really rob it. There's nothing in there to grab. We're just unlocking the door for the 15th one. I'm going to show you a couple other unlockables as well just in case you really don't want to fiddle with the ATMs so once you've arrived we're gonna we're just gonna run towards this building here what is this one the centurion arsenal and we're just gonna follow the path down we are looking for not the Apollos not whatever that is on the left we're gonna pass CJ's open 49 hours wanna, it's like they didn't really finish the sentence oh yeah we're open 49 hours and then what <laughs> and you're going to continue to hug it until you see the Orion Tower, and we're going to go in. So we're going to take the elevator. It only sends us to one floor. It's pretty simple. And on this floor, there is, there's a cleaning robot who doesn't care if we uh, crack this door here. And, yeah, let's go. Let's see. And we'll pop that in there just like that. Get that one in there. Let's see. How are we doing this one? I guess like that. Yep. All right. And there we go. That's number 15. We did it. But we are not leveled up yet. That's okay. We're good. By the time we can level up, that's when we'll start using our security. But let me show you a few other places just in case you still need it. So the next picks, if you need them, the next lock picks, we're going to go back to the Voli area so we're right now Alpha Centauri we're gonna go down and to the right to Voli click that there we are and then we're going to go to Voli Alpha and then Neon Core all right and we're gonna land there at Neon Core now there's a computer a, a novice computer a novice door and then there is a safe which is pretty easy to find it's also by itself so what we're going to do is we're going to go west. So if you look at your compass in the bottom left, the, the fat, like the thicker notch on your compass wheel is north. So we're going to turn left and run all the way down this hallway. And we're going to go to the, I believe it's called the Neon Lounge. And we're going, this is a really good place that we're going to revisit later to rob. If you want to, you don't have to, but it's free money. It's a lot of money too. It's a lot. I'm going to show you all the good money spots once we have our uh, skills up. So here we go, Astral Lounge, Astral Lounge, not Neon Lounge, my bad. But here we are, we're in the, we're in the club, you know, dropping it like it's hot. We're gonna take the VIP elevator to the left. And for whatever reason, we can just come up here, it's fine. All right, and then we take a left. There's a guard, if you hang out near the guard, she'll give you a quest. As you round the corner here there will be a room with a computer in it and i've already unlocked it but this computer is a novice lock so feel free to do that turn back around there's a guard there this door on the left is a novice lock you can unlock that to get your uh you know your your lock picking points and we're going to go ahead and fast travel back to the neon no, no, we want to go to Neon Core, so we're back in the middle of the town. 
to get to the safe now, which is pretty easy to find. All right, so if we turn to the left and then and then straight right, so we're facing north. We're gonna go to Ebb side, and then this is going to lead us up a bunch of stairs to another safe, a novice safe, and then that should be it. Like. <laughs> You should be able to have your lock picking up your security up by now. But uh, we want to we want to travel west as much as possible. So we're going to just try to go hard west here and go up as much stairs as possible while traveling west. As long as the game allows. So let's just kind of hug the wall here. And we're just looking for stairs that lead upward because the safe is up there. There's some stairs. All right. And we're going to climb the stairs. Just a few, just a little bit more stair climbing and my character's getting tired. And it's, it's, it should be over this way. Yes. So here we are, northwest. And there's a shotgun on the ground, some ammo. And then the safe, you can unlock that too. That's also another novice lock. So that is plenty to pump us up to security. So there we go. That will allow us to learn rank three so we can hack the master level locks. We don't need rank 4, we only need rank 3, and after rank 3, once we have rank 3, we can open everything in the game. Alright, so let's go get a bunch of level ups now, and uh, here's how this is going to work. So, you're going to open your map, and you're going to zoom out, and right now we're in, we're in Voli, by the way. This is planned, so we're going to Porima now, we're going to jump there, there we go. And then we're going to jump to the next area. You can ignore this. That's just a side quest that we don't need to do. We're going to zoom out twice so we can get back to this screen. And then we are going to travel to Denebola. All right. We're going to jump there. Don't worry about that fuel consumption. It's fine. It it's basically means you can't do the grab jumping from one part that's super far away to another. Like, if there's not two systems next to each other, your ship is going to be too weak to go there. But we're going to fix that. <laughs> We're going to open up a whole lot of the game before the game even truly begins. So now we're at Dinabola. I'm just going to look at the planet, push E. That's going to allow me to hit the, the planet map, and then we're going to swivel it around to the secret outpost and then land there. Now, as soon as you exit your ship, you're going to be attacked. So what I want you to do is, while you're in your ship, well, while this plays, whatever, we want to ready our really good gun. We don't want our cheap gun. We're, we're using the good stuff in this one. And uh, I like to save before doing this dungeon because it's it's a pretty brutal one. So don't exit the ship. Get get up out of your out of your seat because we're gonna ready our weapon, right? We're gonna make sure everything's equipped and ready to go. We're also gonna quick save because it's all it's you know this game crashes so often. We have 888 bullets. That's more than enough to do the dungeon. So we're gonna sit back down in the seat because that's faster than climbing out of the ship manually. Just gotta wiggle the monitor a bit. And then we're going to hit the X button for exit ship. Directly to our right will be our first enemy. And uh, we're just going to lightly tap them down. So this that was a level 8. This is level 14. These guys are pretty low level. But once we get inside, there's our level up. We're going to now learn security rank. Well, hey, wait. Why is it 14 out of 15? Huh? What the hell? All right. Well, this is take two. Uh, <laughs> All right, so as soon as, as you zone in, on the left side are going to be the enemies. Remember, just lightly tap them with your weapon. Also, yeah, they just shot a grenade at me this time. There we go, level 6. Now, when I push the button here, it's time to rank up to rank 3. Now, the last one is pick 30 locks. You're going to pick more than that as you play throughout the game because, like I said, you, you know we haven't even started yet. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to make our way uh, towards the quest marker here, the blue one. And uh, loot everybody that you see along the way. Make sure you grab their ammo and their med packs. You don't need their gear. We're gonna, we're not, we're gonna clean up on the way out. Let's just say that we're gonna clean up on the way out of here. But just head towards the quest marker, and uh, I'm gonna take this little hallway here. Now the enemies do ramp up when we go inside, so be aware. Remember, light taps. Don't hose them down. It's a level 14. There's a level 14. Here's the thing. If you run inside, they will follow you. That's a level 30. So it's about to get a little little bit tougher. But look how, look how easy they, they die. And uh, let's see. Grab the credits. Grab the ammo. 
Remember, ammo does not, uh, let's reload. As soon as we walk in, those guys will follow. So we are now in the lair of the Mantis. And uh, this is, it's a pretty dangerous dungeon. And there's some traps I'm gonna teach you how to beat. But uh, they will zone in through this door. So just give it a little bit of time. They're coming. And, uh, or you can start clearing. There we go. And take them down. <laughs> just door camp them, huh? Like they never played Rust before. All right, and so uh, this dungeon, it's pretty straightforward. It's not a maze or anything, but uh, there is a lot of stuff to loot. There is a lot of things to lockpick. So you're, you're going to just fill up and loot. So make sure that before you get here that you've stored as much as you can. I also want to mention you should be abusing quick saves. There are beds in this dungeon, so you, you will be able to sleep in them and heal without using your heal kits if you want, but you don't have to. And here is our first legendary pistol. Now, the loot is random in these crates, but because we're going to be opening, popping all of them open, we're going to be getting a lot of good stuff. So, yeah, keep it coming. Also, this is what the bed looks like, so you can just sleep on it and restore your health. As you come down the stairs during this dungeon, you're going to see like a glass wall here, a room that kind of looks like this, a white chair over there, and make sure you don't miss this one. Over here, besides the bed, because you want to use the bed to sleep, there is the Bounty Hunter spacesuit. Now, this is our temporary carry armor for this, the rest of this dungeon, because our mining spacesuit, pretty poopy. You think, oh, legendary, L look at the stats on this legendary, but look, 37 physical, 128 physical defense. You definitely want to put on the Bounty Hunter suit. It will absolutely help tank hits later on. Very important, and make sure to always sleep one hour to fully heal your character. It's brutal out there. Oh, also, there's a really good helmet where this white chair is. Not to spoil it too much, even though this isn't really a story. This character here, it doesn't matter what you do to him. If you bring him with you, if you kill him, nothing changes. His outcome is pretty much always the same. It doesn't alter yours in any way. So let's talk about the puzzle room now. There is a few solutions to this room. Make sure you quick save before you do it. So you open the door, and you think you're a badass because you have your bounty hunter armor. There are four turrets on the ceiling, and there's a bunch of words on the ground. If you've been paying attention to the radio things you've been listening to, picking up off the dead guards or space pirates, then you might know the answer. If you try to run through it, they will shoot the hell out of you and uh, kill you. Yeah, they, they pretty much hit you in the head and you die. So, not fun. <laughs> and um, the solution that you're supposed to do is... Step on the letters for Tyrannus. So there's T, and then Y, and then we need to find an R. Except it gets a little awkward, so Tyrannus. And then, you know, that'll keep them from shooting. That's one solution. The second solution is because we have such high security, you can simply just go over here to the computer and hack it and turn them off. The third solution is my favorite, and that is wrong button that is to go to your aid and you have that amp and it increases your move speed by 35 percent we're gonna chug one of those or inhale it whatever and now we move real fast so we're just gonna sprint across before the turrets can acquire us and that did they patch it i don't know if they patched it that would be kind of interesting if they did patch it because it did feel like cheating in the betas but i'm gonna try it again i actually have it hot keyed to number nine so number nine, let's go. And we're running, we're running. Okay, maybe they did. I, I swear they didn't patch it. Maybe if I leap, maybe if I jump. Uh, there is a fourth solution, and that's just to shoot the turrets, but uh, that, the, the amp is way more fun. <laughs> there we go, we made it through. So, oh, they turn around. Oh, they did patch it. Oh, wait, no, I'm stupid. <laughs> okay, so when you run to the end, it's not over yet. Sorry, it's been a while since I've played, uh, now that it's officially released. Alright, so I'm going to start with the T, and that... Hey, they're shooting immediately? That's not fair. Hit the button. Hit the red button at the end of the finish line, and they will turn off. So, at this point, if you don't want to waste bullets, you can pull out your scan, uh, you know, this thing, and fry the turrets. These things are worth 60 plus experience each. That's going to take a while. I like it faster. Let's just kill them. There we go, 66. And look at look how much we're about to level up from just turrets. 
<laughs> and they, they kind of spaz out. You can also loot the turrets, by the way. We're so close to level. You, you can grab their ammo. Yeah, they're, they're, they're spazzing, so they never did fix that. Oh, that one had a lot of loot. Also, don't forget to loot the dead bodies, you know? They're over here. They got stuff on them. They're not completely pointless. Well, that one is. Rip Shank. Art Plus. But yeah, you can loot the turrets, you can loot the bodies, and then you can continue on in the dungeon if you want. As you loot the dungeon, you might have a problem with your carry weight. My mass is now 139 out of 135. Well, guess what? I've got two skill points here. We only need one more to max out commerce. Why don't we go put a point in weightlifting? That's going to give us 10 extra carry weight, and we're going to get even more than that without having to level it up again. So don't worry about that. We're about to acquire way more carry weight. Once you've cleared out the enemies in this big wide cave, all you have to do to claim your ship, well, the, the first part of claiming your ship, is to run over and flip the switch, and that's going to send the ship up to the surface of the planet, which we're going to go pick up in just a little bit, but we have to go get our legendary armor set, and to find that, we're going to go back this way, away from the uh, rising pillar. Make sure all the robots are dead, by the way. And it is in this area here. We're going to open this door. And there's a lot of other loot to grab and sift through, and all of that's just fine. But let's talk about something super important. Do not open this door and loot this stuff just yet. Save right before, like right in front of the door. Do a quick save. This is the most important thing. You are going to be save scumming until you get a set of armor that matches what you want. But what I highly recommend is one with the Deep Pockets mod so that all weapons that you pick up from now on will be half as heavy and then something that gives you plus 40 carry weight. But also, everything else also needs to be good. So we're going to open the door and this is rolled as soon as we loot the mannequin. So here we go. Let's see what mods we got. We got Combat Veteran. That's very, very good. The majority of people that you fight will be combat or will be humanoids. Fastened, plus 20 carry capacity. Yes, that's good. Assisted carry. We don't ever want to be at a drain when we're encumbered. So this is a this is a reroll. That like for me, there's a few mods that are instant rerolls. One of them is assisted carry. The other one is auto medic. I don't want the game automatically eating my healing items whenever I'm low on health. That sounds cool, but it also sucks. So let's see what we got this time. We got chameleon. Well, we can spec into chameleon late game with talent points. We don't need it on our armor. Uh, resource weighs 25% less. Resources aren't super heavy to begin with. So mechanized plus 40 carry capacity. That's good. Let's see what else we got. Mirrored. I do not like mirrored. I usually reload when I get a mirrored because... 4% chance to reflect is not high enough for me to care. Also, you don't want chameleon on two pieces of gear. That's a waste, so that's a that's a reroll for me. I, I'm just hitting my quick load button, and we're going to do this until we get some good armor. This can take a few minutes. This can take 20, depending on how picky you are. But let's see. In incendiary, chameleon, combat vet, reactive. Uh, Basically, if I don't get deep pockets and carry weight, I just reroll anyway. So I'm going to continue to reroll until I find a winning set of armor. All right, this is a pretty good but not perfect roll. We have the spacesuit, which is technician is good because robots hit hard. Weapons weigh 50% less. Mechanized for plus 40 carry capacity. We have the backpack. I'm not a big fan of, but combat veteran very good. Uh, thermals are the easiest thing to get in the game, so that's trash. Mirrored is also trash, so this is the bad one. But uh, the space helmet also. Mirrored, not my favorite either, but minus 25% oxygen consumption is huge. It's insane. Also, resource hauler, not really my favorite. Don't really need it, but it's got weapon holsters, carry capacity. It's also got the O2, so that's, uh, that, that's 3 out of 9. So I'm, I'm taking it. I'm taking that and then I'm going to save that. I'm going to equip it and then save it. So we have the full mantis suit now. So we can put on all the mantis stuff and everything else gets sold. And look at that. I am no longer overweight and we could level up weightlifting more if we need more carry capacity. No problemo. Also, just a gameplay mechanic reminder, a faster way out of the dungeon rather than backtracking, taking the elevator 
unlocking the door. You can just fast travel to your ship if you're not over encumbered, which you should really leave, you know, at least one or two kilo or kilograms until, you know, before you're over encumbered. Um, blah. Over encumbered. Also, don't forget to claim your new ship. Don't worry about this one. Uh, people will come pick it up for you. It's uh, like a little valley service. We're going to follow the the blue <laughs> the blue icon there. And sometimes enemies will have respawned out here. So be on your guard. Also, I never did loot this, I guess. What if I Grindle? Oh, dang. Yeah, don't forget to loot everything. And uh, yeah, there's the new ship. We're going to... Uh, we just got 2,000 bucks just for getting it. 220 experience. And once we lift off with this bad boy, then uh, <laughs> then it's technically ours. So the only difference between the starter ship and this one, this one has better weapons, more shields, more health. It's faster. It also has what's called shielded cargo, which means you can smuggle things, which is important for later uh, when we start grab grabbing what's called contraband and selling that. So here we go. Once we set down... Uh, the ship is ours, the game will explain how having multiple ships works, and you can, you know, put crew in it, so let's hit the takeoff button, there we go, and we're off. So this is, again, a much better ship than the starter ship, it lets you start smuggling immediately if you want to, which I'm going to kind of show off what that is, and sort of, not exactly how it works, but... Uh, j just a, a few smuggled items that you can you can now rob with your you know skills that you have but very important the first things first we need to max out the most important skill commerce so that we buy at a 20% discount and we sell for a 25% more than we did without any of this and what this allows us to do now is just dump items onto shops and just acquire mass amounts of money if you want, you can go clear a few outposts and you could buy one of the best ships in the game. So, for example, why don't we uh, make a whole bunch of money now with our massive amounts of carry weight and our maximum mercantile commerce skill. Let's go ahead and head back down to Voli. And we're going to go to Voli Alpha, of course. And then we're going to go to Neon Core. And let's offload all of our equipment that we just looted from that dungeon onto the Trade Authority. Or any of the shops that'll take it, really. But Trade Authority is really the easiest. And then we're going to go steal a ton of liquor and sell that. It'll be uh, lots of fun. I'm going to go sell. Right now, where are we at? I am at 18,000 credits. Remember, uh, that's kind of what we started with. So we're already back there. But we have, you know, a powerful gun with lots of ammo. You can always spend your hard-earned credits on more ammo if you want to kill stuff quickly. But... Like I said earlier in the video, your go-to daily driver will be a modified Grindle. This one's just semi-auto, trying to get armor piercing, and this thing just slaps. As you level, it'll continue to slap for a very, very long time. I want to show you something to be aware of when selling. If you sell, make sure that the vendor has enough money on them. The vendor currently has 2,703. If I were to sell this weapon, which I wouldn't because this is our big bang freaking mega DPS weapon... The vendor credits turn red, meaning he can't afford to buy this from us, so we would be at a loss if we sold it. So don't sell it. If you want them to get their money back, wait a few days or go to a different planet and sell. The first thing we're going to rob for lots of money is the club, the, the nightclub here. We're going up the VIP elevator once again, and we are going to take every single room for all of its worth. First, we'll start here with this room, and we're going to do a quick save because sometimes guards are psychic. And there are wine bottles. These are worth 300 each. Oh, they've already found me. <laughs> That's why we quick save, boyos. So we just quick load there. And um, I don't know how she saw me through the wall. But uh, sometimes if there's doors, you can close them. The, the All the other rooms are way easier than this. So again, she's all the way over there. I'm crouched. There's, like, unless someone from the floor down here looked up and saw me yoink them, right? Which is silly. How do they know it's not mine, you know, to grab? But we're going to grab pretty much everything of good value here. This room doesn't have a lot. Also, the food can sometimes be very valuable, so make sure to check. Oh, the owner. Oh, come on. I'm in line of sight of somebody through one of these stupid windows. Dang it. Okay, well, you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and clean out every single room.
The next store we're going to rob is on Ebb side, and we're back here in the middle. We want to face north, looking at our compass, the big, thicker, bolded knob, and we're going to go to Ebb side, And then we're just going to wander around until we find the next club, which allows us to steal our first contraband, as well as their drink products, because they sell quite decently. So we're going to just uh, hug the walls here, kind of, sort of, and... We should stumble across it pretty quickly. It is just around the corner somewhere. It's it's hard to miss. When we see it, we'll know. There it is. Madame Sauvage's place. You just kind of wander around down here until you find it. Or you can just follow where I went. Anyway, so this is really easy. Why, did, why were items flying up? What the hell happened here? Weird. Uh, <laughs> items are just popping off the shelves. So we're going to open the door. And then we're going to shut the door. There we go. Now we have complete privacy to yoink everything off the shelves. But in this specific locker, we have stolen artwork worth 15k. This is contraband. We have the ship now to transport it if we want to. We don't really need to, but there is wine to steal in all of these holes. And the entire shelf is ours. So we're just going to pull it all off the shelf. I don't even have to be sneaking. I can just kind of stand under this box jump up and, and grab it there we go and even though the door is see-through no one cares no one is caring that we're stealing all the alcohol and you know these bottles are not the cheapest they're 300 each so there we go if only i were taller <laughs> uh that's pretty much about it that we could steal in here uh, oh, no, wait, never mind. There's another entire shelf. <laughs> I forgot. This place is super easy early money. And there we are. Oh, also in the wine holes. I don't know what these are called. I'm sure they have an official name. But just go ahead and grab, grab, grab. Nothing stopping us. Also, more bottles down here. There we are. And that's all the valuables. So we can mosey on out of here now. And, uh... Go sell. So now that we have that contraband, it does become difficult to travel. Even though we do have the ship, it is a percent chance to not get caught when you put it in cargo. It's better just to sell it yeah. to the trade authority the second that you get it. You don't yes. get to have the, the full value either, even with our max commerce. So we're getting 2000 for the stolen artwork, but it does let us travel around much quicker. And uh, we still have all those stolen wine bottles, so we got to go offload those on another planet. Why don't we go on down to Alpha Centauri? Centauri? I don't know how to say it. And here we are. Um, well, wrong planet. I totally clicked the wrong planet there. Uh, <laughs> muscle memory, huh? All right, so let us go to... Yeah, we'll go here. And because we don't have the contraband on us... We can skip straight to landfall, whereas if you have the contraband, you have to float in outer space until they clear you for landing. And when they don't, that's when you just load game. But uh, there's two contrabands that I know of in this area, and we've already unlocked one earlier. Is over here at storage. We unlock the door. You can go grab the contraband, and then I'll show you how to get the second contraband that I found in this entire zone. And I've, I've looked all over. Where is it? There it is. It is the uh, the mech components. We don't want them to see us yoink it. Yoinkers. Mech components, we got them. Alright, cool. And uh, the next one is in the police station, right in front of a cop. And we're going to use our old friend, the trash can, to scoop it out of view. And then pick it up. And then, you know, that's more money. And then all these wine bottles that we also basically stole. Well, that's free money too, so... Not only are we going to be... We're, we're over-leveled for when we start the game. Remember, the game hasn't started yet. You know? Uh, but we can continue to farm. And we could go buy a narwhal ship, which is a huge ship. That'll allow us to uh, go to much more dangerous planets. To increase our farm further. And it's... Like, the sky is the limit here. We've, uh, we've pretty much got it made. We have very deadly weapons. We have... The best damn armor that can carry loads and loads of stuff. So whenever you do... I keep calling them dungeons, but whenever you do a settlement or an expedition or... Really, whatever the heck you want to call it. <laughs> you, 
you will be able to absolutely just uh, pick up everything and then sell it, and that's big money. Especially when you kill like 50 dudes. Alright, so we gotta go steal from the cops now. We're going to the UC security office. We're gonna open the door. And... To open these doors, there's like a little switch on the wall. Uh, somewhere, I think I've already flipped it at some point. I guess this one's just open, whatever. So we can walk in. We're gonna go up the stairs. And, yeah, it's like these little switches. You just pop them open. And they don't care. They don't mind. But, as we go up the stairs, the very first cubicle to our right, there is a harvested organs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quick save so we don't anger the guy. We're gonna grab his trash can. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna steal us some organs. Yay. So, just knock it off the table. Who cares if it's a still beating heart. Uh, we're gonna, and then we're just gonna kind of knock it over here into this next room where the cops aren't gonna be watching us. There we go, get in there. Yes, get in there, get in there. Also, I just want to mention real quick that these master safes, they have like nothing in them. They're, they're not worth it, so let's yoink that. And there we go, we got the, the organs. And lucky us, we are super close to the trade authority. <laughs> Fancy that, the trade authority is always nearby. We can go hawk our goods. And then enjoy our, our our luxury, our riches. Weightlifting, I can level that up now if I need to, it's but, cliche, but that's we save that for whenever we're overburdened and we don't want to be overburdened, but we still want to pick stuff up. Alright, so now I'm going to switch to sell mode and then go to misc and then we're going to sell the mech components and the harvested organs and all this stolen goods from that other planet. Uh, we go to the aid and this is where we're going to sell... Not too much there, not too much there. 151 bottles of wine on the wall, boyos. Let's, uh, you know, sell 4,300 worth. There we go. So we're at f almost 41,000 credits. When you do a, f a few of the starter uh, story missions, they, they front load you with credits so that you can start spending and experimenting with the game. So that's another 20k. Uh, and then if you do even more story missions, that's going to push you to 100k, especially if you're looting all the guns and armor that they're dropping. Uh, so once you have 370k, that's when you can buy a giant ship, and then you can really go to the level 90 zones and just... With the, with the uh, what is it called, again, the advanced mag shear, you, you can just kill anything in the game and take their stuff, and it's over. It's completely over. <laughs> You also have other backup guns with plenty of ammo and all of them that you can use for just about any situation. The modified Grendel is going to take up basically everything, and then once you get one with armor piercing, it's, again, it's over. So, other than that, just store all this extra junk. You know, make sure you sell the stolen goods. Anything with a red tag. Just wait two days. The trade authority, they're going to, uh, want to sit right here wait my two days and then sell the rest of my stolen goods so that uh, they don't get confiscated if I accidentally bump into a guard or something. Yeah, yeah. Also, I forgot to mention, you don't need to wait two days. You can just wait one day and they get their money back. So there we go. And finally, do remember that whenever you're ready to actually start playing again, you return to the lodge. You talk to Sarah over there who's, uh, she's a little, a little sad that we left her behind to go on adventures. And uh, let her know that you're ready to start the game. Yay! <laughs> uh, but remember, you can unlock everything in the game now. So you can actually go to all those weird things that you always wonder what the hell is in them. And you can open them up and see what's inside. And again, anything like this, you want to save before you do it. Because this will randomly roll the mods, assuming it's a legendary. Also, if you're wondering what was in that mannequin, it's just flat you know, gear, but it's it's high stats and it sells for quite a bit, so, I mean, money is money. Oh, I also want to mention, with this ship, uh, one of the passives is that space pirates, when you encounter them, they know what the mantis is, and so they just run away. They just leave. They don't like fighting you. At the very start of the game, you encounter this locked uh, closet here with a master lock on it. If you're wondering what's inside, then it, you get... Uh, just a purple random weapon, 2,500 credits, a useless spacesuit. Like, you would think it would be pretty cool, but no, it's it's garbage stats. Uh, you also get uh, some chlorine and some water. Oh boy. 
What else we got? Biosuppressants, just more credits, really nothing of value in here. Uh, not even hidden away in the corners or anything, so uh, no real reason to come back here. Oh, we do have something on the wrap, a deep core pack, which is worthless. Uh, nothing on the on the rack here, so, yep, just, uh, <laughs> not really, not really worth coming back for, you know? Just, uh, just in case you're curious. Now, that's basically it for the video. You are all set, you're fully geared, you've got a decent ship, you've got amazing guns, you've got tons of money to afford whatever the hell you want to buy, you've got a huge amount of early game carry weight so that whenever you do these story missions you do any kind of mission you can pick up every single armor and weapon off the dead bodies and then vendor yeah, them and you have more storage on your ships like so you're all set to be able to buy the best ships the best weapons and not die over and over or have the enemies be treated as bullet sponges because they just actually die when you shoot them Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helped you learn how to do the log picking. If you want a faster version of this guide, just skip all the log picking segments. If you want, though, that will heavily limit your treasure earnings in the future. I know that pick, picking locks sucks in this game. It's really awful. But if you want some of the best gear, they're all behind lock chests. So you have to level it. I wouldn't skip commerce for a second. And if you have points into stealth, it makes it easier to steal later on, so you can fill your inventory full of really good valuables. But that's all I've got. Please subscribe. Please get me to 100k subs. And thank you so much. On the right side of your screen is a video you should absolutely click. Go ahead and give it a click, and uh, your crush will acknowledge you exist.